Do you ever get tired of watching your items go poof in the corruption chamber? Watch enemies go poof instead, which leads to joy rather than deep, unsettling depression. Autobombers are a beautiful creation, traditionally centered around four things. The Assassin, Herald of Thunder, Herald of Ice, and the inability to kill hard bosses. No longer, I say, because today we are ushering in a new, modern era of autobombers with a sleek new design, built-in friends, and a wide selection of skills. The build centers around a few key components. Primordial Bond, a new cluster notable, the Elementalist Ascendancy, to the Shimmeron Unique Wand, and the Explosion Chest mod. The first three things on the list are all about scaling the explosion mod damage as well as our single target, while the explosion mod itself will hard carry our clear and auto bombing satisfaction desires. Stacking six of these primordial bond jewels with the elementalist ascendancy allows us every golem buff multiplied by about eight to nine times, thus giving us a great physical damage reduction, fantastic attack and cast speed, massive life regen which deals with the shimmer, shimmer on degen, and some generic damage and increased crit chance. Primordial Bond also gives us 10% increased damage per golem, which we have 9 of those, thus giving us 90% increased damage per Primordial Bond node. We have 6 of these, thus giving us 540% increased damage just from these nodes alone. Shimmeron allows us to scale our crit harder than any other item in the game, even giving our explosions a high chance to crit. So if we have roughly 1000% increased damage on our build, which would scale the explosions from 3% to 33%, of monsters life as damage when they explode, we then crit dealing 3 to 5 times that, thus resulting in an explosion that deals over 100% of a monster's life pool to nearby enemies. This means we can create chains of explosions as long as monsters are close enough to each other to chain the explosion. Now that we've gone over the building blocks of how our build works, Let's get into the gear choices. To start it off, we dual wield Shimmerons to buff our crit chance to the high heavens, ideally prioritizing having the high crit multi roll as high as possible along with a decent corruption. Best in slot would be uh, elemental damage penetration while area of effect is also nice for more consistent explosion change. These wands are currently very out of style and shouldn't be too expensive for you to pick up with a decent corruption. Next up we need a chest piece with the Crusader Explosion mod. Now. This is also a good time to mention, I did this build as a life character, thus my gearing will be focused towards life on every single piece rather than energy shield. That being said, I believe CI would be viable and perhaps even stronger variation of the build. However, I didn't want to take the time to put currency and effort into getting CI gear, so in the description I'll give you a POB for how I would path it if I did this character as a CI, and then you're going to be on your own in terms of figuring out what you need to do to get gear for the CI version. I would only recommend going CI if you have a, uh, a bigger price, like a, a bigger purse, being able to afford more expensive gear, because CI is definitely going to be more expensive than getting life going. For our amulet, we use the Primordial Chain to give us additional golems, giving us higher buff effect and more damage. Ideally, we would want like a movement speed or elemental resistance corruption here, but I only had 10 amulets to corrupt before I got a semi-usable corruption, and I called it a day. I didn't want to spend more time anointing amulets and corrupting them for plus one power charge. For our rings, we sure for sure want Assassin's Mark on hit. This is pretty mandatory. It basically gives our explosions a much higher chance to crit, giving us flat crit chance on our explosions because they proc Assassin's Mark, which then they explode, killing that enemy, and have a higher chance to crit because of it. That's pretty mandatory. The second ring, however, with the plus one power charge, this is not mandatory. This ring is cost us about 5x, which is pretty expensive, and all it gave us is really one power charge, some fizz damage, and some fizz reduction. If you can't afford a ring like this, don't feel bad about just grabbing a ring with high life and high resistances. This is going to make your gearing throughout the build a lot easier and for a fraction of the price, and it's completely unnecessary to have that at one more additional power charge. For our belt, we grabbed high life and resistances. I would recommend crafting an elder or hunter stygian with pristine and prismatic fossils, then socketing in an abyssal jewel with chance to gain onslaught on kill with maximum life. On the budget end, you'd just grab an item level 84 elder leather belt and pristine prismatic fossil that for life and resistances. With our boots, we grabbed elusive tailwind movement speed boots with the sole purpose to run around maps faster. The budget version would be just grabbing life and movement speed and some resistances. For our gloves, we get into the options scenario where there's multiple ways you could go with this. For top end single target, you'd want Culling Strike Unnerved Gloves. To make our explosions proc Herald of Thunder, you would want Physical Damage to Lightning Damage Conversion Gloves. To change the aesthetics of our explosions for Herald of Ice, in addition to the Herald of Ash MTX, you would want Physical Damage to Cold Conversion. 
On the budget end, I would just grab High Life and Resistance Gloves with an open prefix and craft Physical to Lightning. For our gloves, we grabbed OK Resistance's Life, the Incursion Fizz to Lightning mod, which can also occur with the Crusader Conversion mod, so we then slammed con a Crusader Orb on there and we got Fizz to Cold Conversion, which gave us the cooler looking explosions because we could also have Herald of Ice MTX mixed in with our Herald of Ash MTX. With the Crusader Orb, you can have basically an 80% chance of hitting a physical to some element conversion mod. So I would rec generally recommend this if you're using some sort of physical spell and you're trying to get most of it converted from physical to elemental damage because we have a lot of elemental penetration and additional elemental damage on the tree. Last but not least, our helmets. We just grabbed a cheap skull head with a plus one power charge corruption for 20c. This is the budget version. It's where you grab a unique helmet with life with a corrupted plus one power charge. Next up the ladder of expenses is if you want for you go for a warlord helmet with plus one power charge and plus three minion gems. This allows you to have much better buff of buffs from the most important golems in your arsenal. And even above that would be getting plus three minion gems, plus one power charge, and if you had the balls corrupting an additional power charge on top of that. There's a lot of ways you can min-max the helmet, but at the end the budget version will work just fine. That's what I use the whole way through the build. Now that we've covered the gear, let's go in-game and discuss gem links, flasks, the passive tree, the pantheon, and our bandit choices. Now that we're in-game, we're going to go over our gem links, and then our passive tree, our flasks, and our pantheon of bandits. So to start off with, we're going to start off with the main skill. Um, I chose lightning tendrils. This is solely because lightning tendrils is one of the fastest casting abilities in the game. And say I'm running around a map, I can easily just pop lightning tendrils real quick to start an explosion if I don't have Herald of Thunder already going, or if there's just a little bit chunkier of a mob and Herald of Thunder's not killing them, then I can just go boop and, and set off the explosion myself. Uh, this is not going to be your top end single target, and frankly, you don't need to use this. You can use literally whatever spell you want. All of our damage is basically generic scaling for the most part. We do have a few scenarios where we grab increased elemental damage, in which case a physical spell might not be top end, in that scenario, I would just recommend getting a lot of conversion. You can get up to 50% conversion on your gloves, along with a conversion elsewhere. Like, say you get, um, I'll go over this scenario, but there could be a scenario where you're using Hatred, and you could have a Hatred conversion watcher's eye. Um, but to start off with, don't feel like you have to use Lightning Tendrils. I'm just saying you can use basically whatever spell you want. We have Generic Pen, we penetrate all three elements the same, and we do damage on all three elements pretty much the same across the board. So keep your keep your mind open as to what skill you want to use here. But outside of that, basically just get some links based on the spell you're using. Since we're using a channel skill, we use infused channeling. If you had a normal casting spell, you'd use spell echo. And then we always want power charge on crit here, as Elementalist itself doesn't really come up with an easy way to get power charges. We really need to get power charges in order to deal single target. So you want to get those as fast as possible on a boss. And having it in your main single target is a good way to do that. As well as it actually becomes a decent single target so sort of support gem when you get more power charges. With 8 power charges, it's 32% more damage, which is decent. It's at least uh, somewhat respectable, but it's really important to get the power charges up. Outside of that, it's really up to you what you use. We have an awakened level, we have an empower level 4, we have awakened LE focus. Mix these up based on what you're doing. Like if you have divine ire, you're going to be able to shock bosses, in which case you wouldn't want elemental focus. So. Keep, this, keep your mind open based on what skill you end up choosing to use, and go from there. Next, end up, next up, we have our Golem Gems. Pretty much across the board, we want all of our Golems linked to Empowers. The reason for that is so that we can get more effect out of it. Uh, for example, our Stone Golem. If we have a link to a level 4 Empower, it gives us 127 base life regen. If we take it out of there, it would only have 110 base life to regen. So it's over... It's about... 10 to 15 percent more life regen we're getting because of having it linked to in a power level four this is why a plus three dominion gems in your helmet would be important as well because you could get way more sustain out of it next up we have our other golem setup which of course is just our lightning golem our chaos golem and that is also linked to an empower you're basically just trying to get out of the realm of getting more buff effects out of it for our chaos golem it would be four percent if we didn't have it linked to empower Putting it in the empower makes it so it gives us 5 base fizz reduction. This is very important for getting min-maxed uh, fizz reduction out of our golem. Also, the empower gives our golems life, which is pretty important for keeping them alive. Next up in supports, we have... This is our Herald of Thunder setup. This is where we have power charge on crit, inspiration, 
and elemental focus. So basically here we're trying to use supports that don't have much mana multiplier on them while having decent damage. So I chose inspiration and power charge on crit for that reason. We generate inspiration charges with our lightning tendrils, but that will also count as getting us more damage for our Herald of Thunder. Just Herald of Thunder with inspiration alone, you wouldn't be able to proc the uh, inspiration charges. So you definitely need to generate inspiration charges somewhere else in your gear, whether that's linking it to your flame dash or your main support skill, so that way your Herald of Thunder actually deals more damage based on that. Because inspiration is, well, like I said, a low mana multiplier. And what to focus is also really good damage-wise. We can't inflict shock to begin with with Herald of Thunder, so giving up inflicting ailments isn't the end of, end of the world here. And it's a good damage multiplier while also being one of the smaller mana multiplier support gems. So, if you want to have more of the Autobomb experience, you need to have this sort of setup for your Herald of Thunder, so that way your Herald of Thunder can kill things. That being said, in order to do this, we had to grab a Heraldry on the tree. So that way, with a Heraldry, you can afford to reserve all five of your Heralds, along with Herald of Thunder being linked up with some supports. Another way to get this done would be having some sort of Helmet Enchant, with reduced reservation for Herald of Thunder, or having one of these rings with Herald of Thunder reservation. Something like that is going to get you across the line for being able to reserve um, your Herald of Thunder with Lynx. This is only in the case where you want to be able to walk around and just have, have Herald of Thunder set off explosions. If you'd rather be the one setting off the explosions, this isn't important. You can have your Herald of Thunder in a zero link. Next up for our gloves, we have just Herald of Ash, Herald of Purity, Herald of Agony, Herald of Ice. That's all of our other her her Heralds. You'll notice I'm using five Heralds here. I'm doing this because I was able to acquire a couple gems that have both Endbringer and Primordial Bond on them. Endbringer, where is it? Endbringer, Primordial Bond. This is a scenario more than likely you're not going to be able to get because when I was looking on the market, there was only like 15 gems or 15 clustered Megalomaniacs like this on the market. More than likely, you're not going to be able to get Endbringer, but don't feel like that's the end of the world. In that scenario where you can't get Endbringer, you basically just drop Herald of Purity, Herald of Agony, you have more mana reservations, you can fit in Skitterbots, or you can fit in a lot of different things. But frankly, this basically frees up uh, your choices of what you can do. While you lose a little bit of damage, you can get other benefits, as you can pick up other nodes that also benefit you well, like getting something with high life, getting something with some unique modifier, like for here, I used Enduring Composure. This allowed me to get Endurance Charges when I got hit, thus giving me more and more Fizz Reduction. So, don't feel limited to doing Endbringer uh, with a couple of your Megalomaniacs with your Primordial Bond. Primordial Bond carries the build just fine, and it's completely unnecessary to have these here. Definitely just swap it out for a different beneficial aura where you'll get damage from that as well. And you won't feel so bad about losing the damage here. Like if you can fit in a Wrath and then you get damage based on that because you're doing a lightning spell, you might end up dealing more damage than you would single target wise if you were using a lightning spell. That's just an example. So definitely don't feel like you're limited. And using the Wrath would also open up the option to get a, a Wrath Conversion Watcher's Eye, which would then allow you to grab... Unnerve on hit coal gloves and not need fizz to lightning conversion. So that's just to free up some of your options. So next up in our in our other wand, we have molten shell. This is basically we just have this on our left click, so we're not really thinking about it, but it often will give us more defense about half the time it's up. And it's just a nice little extra defense. On top of being able to proc Val Molten Shell if we find ourselves in a particularly dangerous situation. We have precision level one. This is just so we can have a Precision Watcher's Eye, if I can remember where I socketed it. Oh, right here. We have a Crypt Multi Watcher's Eye Precision Mod. If you're not grabbing Endbringers, more than likely you'll be able to figure out a way to fit in a extra 50% uh, aura of some sort if you can get some reduced reservation on your Herald skills, which should allow you to get, get more options in terms of what you can actually get here. So you get Anger Crypt Multi, you can get Wrath Fizz Conversion, you can get Hatred Fizz Conversion, um, I was limited because all I could fit in was level 1 precision and like the only mod that would help me is the crit multi precision mod. Don't feel chained to this mod or this watcher's eye particularly. Um, and lastly we have flame dash which just allows us to move around, get around the map. Um, now let's get into flasks. Flasks are pretty simple. It's basically just a life flask, a cinder swallow with crit chance. This is pretty expensive. And I would say it's not really necessary. The funny thing I noticed while I was playing this build, 
I originally was playing with a diamond flask, and eventually I noticed I was looking over onto my offense sheet at my lightning tendrils. I, my crit chance doesn't look too good right now, it says 30%, but when I have power charges up, it actually goes all the way to 100% because of shimmerons, and thus diamond flask becomes useless and unnecessary, and frankly, cinder swallow might have also been unnecessary with the crit chance. I can't quite remember. The point is, you don't necessarily need a cinder swallow with crit chance, just get one with another mod, and it'll still feel great while mapping. Uh, Bottle Faith is definitely on the expensive end. Get a Diamond Flask here instead to really finish off the crit cap. It's pretty unnecessary as well. Like I've said before, when you're using Shimmerons in a build, you have lots of flat crit chance. Uh, Bottle Faith becomes less and less relevant. Without the Bottle Faith crit chance, I was getting 100% crit chance. Um, I probably should have switched this out for a different flask as well. Another great flask is Aziri's Promise for damage. Um, if you're using a lot of Fizz to Cold Conversion, a Taste of Hate would be great. Um, your options are pretty open for flasks. Just choose ones with damage I would recommend mostly. And then a quick silver for movement speed. Or you could also go even for a defensive flask. I would say you have that freedom to do that here. So that covers flasks. Let's get into the passive tree. So I will I will link a POB to the CI version of the tree. The CI version is going to be over here and over here rather than going all the way over to here. Um, Right now I'll just cover in game the life tree, what it was basically going for. I was basically just going for life, I was going for power charges wherever I could get them, and I anointed the last power charge here on my amulet, obviously. With the CI version, we're able to actually pick up all the power charges, I believe, and that would open up your anoint to some other great node on the tree that you can't get normally. Um, you'll see, on we grab two clusters here. What I would recommend um, is you basically just want to get Primordial Bond on a travel node. Um, that's all you really need here. This renewal mod isn't really super relevant if you can get it It's nice because it gives you a little bit of regen on your golems But otherwise it's not necessary to do that. You would have to get a jewel with raise and pillage um, I'm not sure if there's another cluster node that forces primordial bond onto the travel node and renewal onto the travel node uh, but Suboptimally you just want primordial bond on the jewel node on the travel node and then two sockets and then we go for megalomaniacs with primordial bond Additionally, you want them to have some other neat thing or something else that's helpful for you. For, for one of my jewels, I grabbed Enduring Composure. This is so I could generate Endurance Charges. Don't feel limited to what I did. There's a lot of great notables. There's a lot of notables that can help you. You have a lot of options here. You can get Primordial Bond. You can get Fettle. You can get Primordial Bond Energy from Knot. You can get Primordial Bond plus a plethora of other notables that will be good for the build. Really, just look at your options in the Cluster Notables page and just pick some out and look for them. One one great one we got was Wish for Death. This allowed to they, this gave us uh, Culling Strike because we always cursed enemies with Assassin's Mark and then we had Culling Strike. So really there's actual there's actually an unnerve on hit one too. So keep your options open as to what you get. Just get Primordial Bond with the Megalomaniac and then some other decent notable and you'll be sitting pretty. So we have two cluster jewels, Primordial Bond on the travel node, Primordial Bond Megalomaniac plus two decent uh or one or two decent other nodes it doesn't really necessarily have to be to like a three stat megalomaniac where it's all good stuff at the end of the day you can get just a two stat and the build's still going to operate just fine um other things on the tree we grab a anima stone this allows us to get two more golems because we have one anima stone and then we have a primordial eminence and a primordial harmony plus the primordial chain that gives us um, three, my pri three primordial items, which this gives us the additional golem. So we have three golems at that point. This is a good place to pick up gr Corrupted Blood Immunity, or I picked up some Area of Effect here, because these jewels, for the most part, are out of the meta, and you can find the some, find some decent corruption on, corruptions on them for not too expensive. Um, I think that covers the tree for the most part. I guess I should go into the Ascendancy now. Uh, for the Ascendancy, we grab Legion of the Primordial, Elemancer, this gives us about 450% increased buff effect from our golems, along with some nice generic damage for us. And it gives our golems survivability by making them immune to elemental damage, along with giving us elemental immunity. There's a huge amount of value we get out of this. And then on top of that, we come over here to Pendulum to Destruction, which gives us a bunch of AoE. You'll notice basically half the time when we have 75% increased AoE, the chains of the explosions is just fantastic. Um, without the AoE up, we still get pretty good chains, but... You can definitely tell a difference. Half the time, the explosion chain is just, woo, it's magnificent. The other half is just like, that's pretty fantastic. Uh, next up is Mastermind of Discord. This allows us to get a lot of reduced reservation on our heralds, 
while giving us some buff effect and giving us penetration of all three elements. This is the scenario where I'm talking about it doesn't matter what spell we're using, we have penetration on all three. Uh, you can pick any spell you want and you'll be able to get some decent single target out of it. Obviously there are some skills that are better than other, that's going to be up to you to kind of arbitrarily choose the ones that are better than other ones, so to speak. Or choose ones that aren't necessarily better than other ones, but if you like them, make them work. Um, so that's the tree. That uh, kind of goes over my recommendations for Megalomaniacs along with getting Primordial Bond on the Travel Nodes. Next up would be grabbing uh, Pantheons. Uh, Pantheons we chose Soul of Solaris. The only time I wouldn't use this is if you were in a Simulacrum, I would actually recommend Soul of the Brine King. If we get stunlocked in Simulacrums, we basically die. So that's the scenario where I'd get this. For the most part, we don't get stunlocked, but in Simulacrums it can happen because there's a lot of really tanky monsters that can jump on you, and that's where you kind of get wrecked. So for the most part, I'd recommend Soul of Solaris, but if you do in Simulacrums, get some stun immunity, or basically stun lock immunity. And then Soul of Rysotha, this is just so we can have life flasks during boss fights and not run out. Uh, I tend to spam life flasks a lot, so I definitely need the scenario where I get my life flasks back, because there's dangerous scenarios that come up, and I need life flasks to basically save me in, uh, in the really sketchy areas of a fight, in a boss fight. That kind of covers the Pantheon, that covers our passive tree, that covers our flasks. I think I covered everything, I don't think I forgot. Oh, bandits. Um, type in bandits. Oh, that doesn't work. Passives. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, anyways. For deal with the bandits, uh, we had two passives. You can also go for a Lyra. That's kind of what I would leave it up to you to do. I went for two passives. At the end of the day, dealing doing a Lyra would have helped our elemental resistances, along with giving us crit multi, and you would just drop a couple life nodes for it, which could be pretty worth. I would leave that up to you. Um, that covers it. I hope you guys enjoy this build. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. This is definitely one of the stronger, more well-rounded builds and funner builds I've made in the past, so I would really recommend it. I will leave a PUB with the CI version. If you have the budget, I believe the CI version would be actually quite a bit more tanky than this version, along with being um, higher damage in the end, but it would be a lot more expensive to gear. So that's the that's the quick take on doing a CI version. I'll have a PUB description on it. It's just going to be the pathing. It'll have the same gear or whatever, and that'll be up to you to figure out the CI gear and get it all together. Uh, you guys have a good one. Hope you liked it, and uh, I will see you all later.